Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at creating a cool dropship using greebles and lots of modeling techniques and tips. So buckle up, let's have some fun. Now, just as a reminder, this is the abbreviated version of this tutorial. The full tutorial is about two hours long. It's a live stream that I did a couple weeks ago and you can find the entire live stream uncut on Patreon. You can also get to it if you become a channel member here on YouTube at the all access pass level and higher. So that's a great way if you want more content from C. Bailey Film, check it out there. That's how you can get a hold of it. Um, hard surface modeling is a lot of fun. Once you start to get, your, get, a, get a hang of it and get your mind wrapped around it. Um, it can be tricky at first to get used to, but it's uh, it's pretty cool. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to kind of improvise a design here and uh, talk about what I'm doing as I do it. So feel free to follow along at home. OK, I want this ship to be symmetrical. Um, so I'm going to start off with the mirror modifier. So I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to hit control R and that brings up my loop cut and slide tool. Now, if you click with the loop cut and slide tool and just hit escape without moving your mouse, it'll automatically place that loop cut right in the dead center of whatever it is that you've made or whatever you've got that you're doing it on. Loop cuts are great. Um, they're really, really useful and you'll see we'll use them a lot, but they need to have four sided faces in order to work. If I had a five side face, this, this loop cut wouldn't work. It would kind of hit that five sided face and then it wouldn't know where to go. But a four sided face enables Blender the opportunity to calculate a continuous flow. That's why polygons, which are four sided po um, faces, are really useful in Blender and 3D. Why we're always trying to have four sided faces when we do hard surface modeling. I'm going to switch to my front view. I'm using my number keypad to jump around in those views. If you don't have a number keypad, like if you're on a laptop or something, you can just click up here. These little handles will jump you around the same way. Now I'm going to go into transparent mode because I want to delete all the vertices on one side. So if I hit B to go into box selection mode and then drag a box around this side, you can see I've selected those two points, but I've also selected the ones behind them. And that's because I've got this transparent selection or transparent x-ray view mode turned on. If this was turned off, I would only select the vertices that I can see basically. So if anything's blocked, you can't see it. Anyways, I'm going to delete those vertices. I'm going to come over here to my modifiers tab and I'm going to add a mirror modifier just to kick things off. And I'm going to make sure I set my mirror axis to be the Y so that it mirrors along the Y, turn the X off and I'll make sure merge is turned on. That will merge the vertices at the center. And that's pretty good. Um, I'm also going to add in a bevel modifier and I'm going to set this to limit the angle, uh, limit method to angle. Yep, that's cool. Oh, it's automatically set to that now. That's nice. And I'll increase the angle up to 45 for now. I might need to take that higher later. But the idea is it's only going to create a bevel um, if the angle is greater than 45 degrees. So these are 90 degree angles, these faces here. So that's how I'm getting this bevel. Um, and I can change the amount. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. I might increase the segments up to two. The other thing I'm going to do that's also really, really good for whenever you're doing hard surface modeling is I'm going to come down to the little data symbol here, the green triangle and open up normals and I'm going to tick auto smooth and I'm also going to right click because this won't do anything if you just tick it. You also have to right click on your object, not in edit mode, just an object mode, right click and shade smooth. And what that does is with this turned off, basically um, shading smooth, it's basically whenever you have a hard edge or an edge that's over 40 to 30 degrees, um, so like our 90 degree edges that we have here, it's going to shade it hard. But if it's a, you know, less than 30 degrees, it's going to shade it smooth. So it's, it's nice. It works really well. Another thing that can be really good to help clean up that look uh, is to come over and add the weighted normal. So you can see how it kind of cleaned it up. Look at that. If I turn it off, it kind of, it's got this gradual fade off to the corners. It doesn't look quite right. I turn this on, it suddenly snaps to looking really good. What this is doing is it's taking the weighted normal. So it takes like what's the majority. I think the way it works is what's the, the majority normals. Where are they facing on this in this part of the object? And then it kind of unifies those normals a little bit. It just helps create better transitions between things. So that's what you need. So this these these things, the bevel modifier and the weighted normals modifier, those two together with auto smooth on that can actually help you not have to use a subdivision surface all the time. And you can save a lot of geometry and things can look good. All right, now um, I'm gonna start creating my ship. Now, um, whenever you're creating any kind of thing, you need to think about the basic shape first and you kind of move into tighter detail as you go. So I'm going to select these front points 
and uh, I'm going to scale them on the Z, kind of bring it down a little bit. And then I'll grab these double tap A to deselect everything. I'll grab these back points and I'm going to extrude them out. So, and all of our modifiers are just going to continue to work. They're going to continue to chug away uh, in the background while we create all this stuff. I'm going to pull this right back and create a loot cup. So control R right in here. I'll scale this on the Z, bring it up a touch like this. Let's come over here. I'm going to go into face mode and I'll select this face. You can see I'm just using the same tools at the moment. I'm going to get rid of this camera too. It's in the way. Oops. Out of edit mode, camera and the light. Uh, now, a cool way to work too is when you're doing modeling, um, if you come over here and switch to matte cap and then pick one of these. I like this one because it makes me feel like I'm in ZBrush. Uh, and then you can turn on a bunch of cool settings. So we could do cavity and shadow. Um, sometimes this can uh, not be helpful because you're getting more sense of definition than that's really than it, than really exists in your model. But um, I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm getting this weird shadow down the middle, and I'm just wondering. Yeah, it's from weighted normals. So we might need to um, once we apply our mirror modifier. Oh, I keep it off for now. I'm going to take this section here. I'm going to hit I to inset. Inset is a great tool. It's the same as if you hit. E to extrude and then S to scale. Just saves you a couple of key presses. E to extrude, and I'll grab it on the Y, bring it out like this. These are gonna be my sort of wing modules. Let me look at it from the top. Switch to vertex mode, turn on X-ray again. Double tap A to deselect everything. Grab all these guys and grab them on the Y and pull it out like this. I don't think I will actually bring these guys out. Taper them in a little bit. Um, come up here to this front edge. Uh, I'm going to hit Control B to bevel. And bevel just splits an edge, but it also does a lot of other cool things. You can roll your mouse button and it will increase the number of edges it creates. You can see you can get these really nice rounded sections. So I'm going to do this. I, wanna, I don't want to do too many rounded sections just yet. I'll grab this one. Now this is going to be interesting because you see how it splits here on the side. So we may need to um, make some changes to that in a minute. Grab both of those and pull them in like this. Okay, you can see that pinching. So when you hit a big group of vertices that are all moving together into one point, you get this pinched look um, and that can cause issues. So we're gonna clean that up. I'm gonna select all of them here and hit Control B to bevel. All right, I kind of like this. I think this is gonna be a good foundation for me. Some like intersections here. I'm gonna hit I to inset and I'll bring this group in like so. And then I will hit E to extrude and I'll grab this on the X and bring this group in, bring it out just a little bit. And I'm gonna put some jets in there, I think. Here, I'm gonna grab this face, hit E to extrude, and I will uh, grab it on the X and bring it in. Now I'm gonna get this extra face, which I don't want. I can just select that face and delete face, and delete face. Now I'm gonna scale it up, but I don't want it to be scaling into the Y because of the the mirror modifier. So I'm going to hit S shift Y and the shift basically turns off the Y axis. Uh, I'm also going to turn on proportional editing up here. So sh uh, S shift Y. Let's see what this looks like Let's add a little bit. All right, now I'm going to clean up this section here. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just grab these faces. Um, even better, I'll just grab these faces directly. And I will hit delete faces. Uh, come here. I'm just going to delete. I'm going to delete this face right here. This face, this face. This face. Just going to delete all these guys for now. I'm going to select one face from this wing thing and hit L. That will select linked. Um, and this is kind of like a separate object. I'm going to keep it in the, the geometry, but I'm going to treat it as a separate separate thing. So I'm just going to grab this on the Y, bring it in a little bit, and then I will select by holding Alt, select that loop there, and hit E to extrude, and then scale that in. All right, let's get some interesting shape now. Um, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to grab these guys. Actually, I'll grab this whole top section. Like so, except for that. And I'm going to hit Control B to bevel. I'm going to see what this does. All right, I like what's doing there at the front. This one, I'm not so sure about. Some weird stuff happening there. So I think what I need to do is I'm going to select all. I'm going to hit M to merge. I'm going to merge by distance. Yeah, removed. Okay, so I had some doubled up vertices there that weren't connected. 
So if you ever have something weird going on, just select all and merge by distance. Um, and that'll really help because often there's like two vertices right on top of each other and you need to get rid of them uh, and have it just be one for things to work. So, all right. So now let's see, I'll select this guy again. I'll deselect that and I'm gonna go control B to bevel and now they should all, yeah, they all work together now. So I'm gonna pull this in right about to here, I think. Let's take this edge this edge and then this edge here let's also bevel these guys but i'm going to roll my my mouse wheel so it's just one loop and then i'm going to hit e to extrude and i will grab let's see i'll scale it but not on the x so i'm going to shift x my scale so just going to scale on the y and the z and that will just bring it down okay i feel like this bit Let's select this this group here and control B to bevel this. All right, now let's see, let's do the same kind of thing. Let's grab this loop here and then maybe this loop here and we'll control B to bevel those guys. I'll roll my mouse wheel to just do one group and then I'll hit E to extrude. And I'm just gonna grab it on the Y, pull it in and then I will scale it down a little bit. Um, and I think I will do something similar here. I need to create the, the, um, the cockpit kind of area. Do this, this group, control B. Pull them out, E, and then scale down. A little bit of weirdness here. I might grab these faces that are hiding on the inside, like this, and grab Z, just bring them down a bit, just to clean that up. All right, let's see. I'm gonna grab this edge loop here, and we'll do the same thing, Control B, E, and then scale. All right, now I feel like this back section, we need to pull this forward a bit. So I'll pull this forward, bring it in. Now let's select these guys. I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate. I'll hit E to extrude, and I'll grab it on the X, grab them on the Z, just to create like this kind of visor thing. And also recalculate my normals, because I think they're gonna be a little weird that there, so I might just go object, uh, sorry, come over here, I need to go, is it face or is it mesh? Mesh, there we go, recalculate outside, that fixes up that shading issue. I also feel like I like this shape better than this back shape. So I think I'm gonna grab this and I'll grab it on the Z with a proportional editing turned on. I'll just bring it up a bit like that. Yeah, it looks better. I'm gonna shift A, I'm gonna create a cylinder. Just grab it up a little bit, rotate on the Y 90 degrees. Go into edit mode. I'll select this back face and delete it. And I'll select the front face and delete it. I'll hold down Alt, click that edge, I'll scale it up. Turn on proportional editing. Grab the back edge, scale it down like so. Um, I'll select all and I'll hit E to extrude and I'll scale it up just to give it some thickness. Um, I'll grab it back on the X a little bit as well, I think. Get my uh, loop cut tool and I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to increase the number of cuts. I'm going to escape that. I'm going to hit control B to bevel and I'll pull this like this. And I'll hit E to extrude and then I'll scale this thing up. There we go. I'm also going to come over here, turn on auto smooth right click shade smooth you can see it working really well there and then i'm going to come here and add in the bevel modifier and i'll change the angle limit to 45 which i think it looks right maybe a bit higher maybe 75. this edge here i'm going to e to extrude scale it in some weird weirdness going on there all right let's just just double check i'll hit m merge by distance no I'll try it again yeah, merge by distance. Oh, 32 vertices removed. There we go. There was some extra stuff going on there. 
extrude that, bring this in, E, and grab this on the X, bring it in like that, E, scale it down, grab it on the X, E, scale it down. I'm going to grab one of these edge loops and control B to bevel that. And then E to extrude that and scale it up. Grab it on the Y, pull it out. Touch. Looks good. I might do a couple of those. Bring this over, bring this over. And then I'm going to scale this right down. Grab it on the X, grab it on the Y. There we go. I'm going to use an array modifier. And I'll set it to go along the Y. And zero on that and grab it on the Y. Just position it here. And the reason why I'm using an array modifier is just so that if I make any edits to this, um, it'll just translate straight over. I could also just link the data. That's perfectly fine as well. Maybe we should do uh, another array and array this one down like that. Maybe scale the whole thing. Now what we can do is we can do another array modifier and increase this up until it's roughly in the same spot. Now I can shift D, grab on the X. I feel like there would be one right in the middle as well. So I'm going to duplicate it and get rid of all the arrays. Do that. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to create, uh, let's see, a mesh cube. Just move it over here to the side. Go into edit mode, scale it on the Z, and I'm just going to make some panels and things. So I'm going to grab, grab these edges here. And I'll hit control B to bevel. Just round those out. Grab this top bit and I'll hit I to inset. I'll bring it in and then E and then grab it down like so. Uh, and then I might, let's see, go for uh, some loop cuts uh, along the side here and bevel those, drop them down so they're just one face and then E and scale shift Y. So just scaling on the X and the Z, I might grab them up as well. There we go. I might do the same uh, on the other side as well. So Control R, but maybe not as, uh, I might do four on this side. Control B, you make these bigger. E, scale, shift Y. Um, and then grab this hatch area. I'll hit I to inset. Oh, that's like good. I will, uh, what do I want to do with this? I will, scaling it in actually looks kind of cool. Yeah, that's nice. And then I'll inset it just a little bit and then scale it. That should do it. Yeah, there we go. Now E to extrude, grab it down. Scale in, and then I might try. Let's, let's see what two sphere gives us. Two sphere is a great way to round out objects, so it looks pretty cool. All right, I might just uh, go into X ray mode, go into vertex mode, and select everything along the bottom here. Bring it up a bit. There's one Grebel. Now let's make another one. All right, let's see. I will um, make some, let's, let's do something a little different this time. Make like a, I don't know, I'll bevel this guy. And maybe let's do two loop cuts, three loop cuts here. Scale it up Y and let's grab one of these dudes. Um, switch to x-ray mode, grab all that, rotate Z 90 degrees, grab X, grab Y, 
x, grab y. Might then select this loop. And if I hit double tap G, it's going to slide the vertexes along the edges. So I can get that to work pretty cool. Bring that back down. Might grab the top here. Actually, let's hit E to extrude. And let's scale it on the Y. Grab it on the Y. Scale it on the X, scale it on the Z. That's pretty good. I duplicate it and slide it out. What does that look like? I'm going to come over here and turn auto smooth on for this one. And then I might do that for this one as well. Turn on auto smooth. You can see how much it makes it look nice without having to add tons of geometry. And then let's create another cube. Grab Z. Actually, I'm going to edit mode. Let's grab Z. I think this will be the last one I make. Um, I'm going to, let's see, I will grab this top face and control B to bevel it. And then I'm going to shift S, select, uh, cursor to select it. And then shift A in edit mode, UV sphere. I will create a sphere within the object. And I can just. Let me grab this X, scale it down. And then I think it looks better when it's the same object. Again, using L to select connected there. Shift D, grab it on the X. I'll just put these side by side and then I'll select the base and scale it on the X. Put it on the X. There we go. And maybe take the face and hit E to extrude and grab it down a little bit. Scale it in. Touch, maybe. Right click Shade Smooth and Auto Smooth. I'm going to Alt click the top. Actually, I'm going to brush select the top because it's not actually, those are all three sided faces, so I can't do a loop cut there. And uh, I'll hit I to inset both of these and then E and grab Z to bring them down. Maybe scale. Um, actually, I'm going to scale. Might inset again, E again, and grab Z, bring them up. Just like that. And then maybe I'll come over here. I'll grab this edge, this edge, something like this. Might E and scale. I'm going to do my uh, individual origins as the um, as the pivot point and that will now scale like the individual origins from the origin of each of these selected faces as opposed to you could see it was scaling from like the center point of both of them. There we go. All right, so we got three greebles. So I'm going to save my project and uh, I'll go ahead and name these just so I don't get confused. All right, so now that we've created some greebles, we're going to take these guys and we're going to turn on snapping and uh, we're going to set the snapping mode to face and snap with center and align rotation to target. Okay, now if I duplicate any of these guys, I can bring them over and I can just place them across the surface of my object and just decide, you know, make some cool little. Uh, patterns with these guys. Maybe scale this down.
I could select all these guys like so. And I could shift D, scale Y negative one, and then grab them on the Y. Just turn off snapping. Actually, no, turn on snapping. I could just grab that whole panel, bring it over. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. All right, now after you've done all that, <laughs> let's, uh, let's switch over to rendered view. And uh, I'm just gonna select everything and I'm gonna copy material to select it. So we've got the same material across all these objects. I'm gonna create a sun lamp. Rotate it on the X, rotate it on the Z or the Y like this. I'm gonna take the angle all the way down to zero and I'm gonna bring the brightness all the way up. And I'm gonna take my background and make it black. Because in space, you know, you usually have this like one hard edge um, that really smacks uh, your object and then everything else falls off into black. I'm gonna go into edit mode and I will select the faces that are my sort of front um, viewport area. I'm gonna click plus to create a new material. Click new, click assign. For these guys, we're gonna make them very, very reflectant. Go ahead to edit mode. And might go for like that, you know, that gold color that you get a lot on spaceships. Saturation is a little too intense, so I'll pull that back. Well, have a fantastic day wherever you are. Enjoy your evening or your morning or whatever you got ahead of you. And uh, stay safe. Hope you're doing well. I will catch you in the next tutorial. Until then, see you later. Thanks again for watching this tutorial. Hope you had a good time. Hope you learned a few cool things about modeling and you're ready to go to create your own dropship. Make yours look better than mine. I'd love to see it. Share it with me over on the Discord. Find the link in the uh, description below. And uh, also please uh, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that like button. And don't forget to check out the amazing stuff we've got on the Blender Market and on Gumroad. All those links are in the description. Thank you for all the support. Hope you enjoy these tutorials. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Bye.